Hey guys, Brad from SimpleGuitar.com here and welcome back for another video. Today we are going to be talking about music lingo for total beginners. So lingo meaning the, the words and the phrases, the kind of language that musicians have for themselves. And we're gonna go over some of these things to help make sense of it so that you know what you're talking about so that you can sound like a musician. And also so that you're not just confused when you see these terms or phrases or hear them somewhere. I always like to think of music is a language. It really is. It's a universal language that anybody can understand. But at the same time of music being its own language it has a language that we use to communicate with each other so today we're going to be going over some of the things in this language and how to understand it so that you don't get lost when people are using these different phrases and things so that you know what's going on okay so these first set of terms that we're going to define and go over have to do with guitar specifically and especially these first ones, something to think about with these is that the guitar is backwards. Everything on the guitar is backwards, okay? So you'll see what I mean as, as we go through this. So the first one is up the neck. What does up the neck mean? Well, going up the neck means that we are going to move up in pitch along the neck toward the body of the guitar. So if my hand is on the neck of the guitar and I'm playing notes on the fretboard, like down here, for example, <laughs> It's on my third string. And as I go towards the body of the guitar and the pitch gets higher, I'm going up the neck. Okay, so it's a little bit backwards. A lot of people would think that that would be down, but it's not. Down the neck is moving down in pitch along the neck, away from the body of the guitar, okay? Now, same thing if we're going up a string, so you're playing on one string. And we're going to go up a string. We're going to go to the next string that is higher in pitch. So it's the next highest sounding string. Normally, that means that your pick is going to move towards the floor. So we're going to go from this string, move our pick toward the floor to the next string. And that's the next highest string. Okay. And also, same thing with down a string. Instead of moving your pick down, towards the floor to, to move down a string. We're gonna move up towards the ceiling to move down in pitch to the next lower string, okay? So normally when we're going down a string, we're gonna be moving our pick toward the ceiling. Now, same thing with your higher strings. The higher strings on the guitar are the thinner, higher sounding strings, and your lower strings are the thicker, lower sounding strings. So that's one of the things about the guitar. All this stuff is backwards from what you think it would be, but all of it relates to the pitch, how high or how low the pitch sounds. As we move up, we're moving up in pitch. As we move down, we're moving down in pitch, okay? So remember everything with guitar and usually with music is related to pitch, but it is a little bit backwards from what you would expect on the guitar. Now let's look at your hands. And when we're playing guitar, we use two hands normally. Uh, we have your fretting hand, which is the hand that presses down on the strings and fretboard. For right-handed players, this is usually the left hand. So if you're a lefty and you're playing lefty, then it's gonna be your right hand. Now, there are some times that left-handed people will play guitar right-handed. And if that's the case, then it's your left hand that you're gonna use for fretting. Now, these fingers on your fretting hand are numbered. We have your first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, okay? So your index is one, your middle finger is two, your ring finger is three, and your pinky is four. We don't count your thumb, okay? We're not like piano players. Piano players count your thumb as your first finger. But on guitar, your first finger is your index finger. If you ever see it notated to use your thumb on your fretting hand, then it will be shown as a T. Your picking hand is the hand that uses the pick or strokes the strings. For right-handed players, this is usually the right hand. So for left-handed players playing left-handed, then it's the left hand. Now your picking hand doesn't always use a pick. Sometimes you're going to play finger style and you're going to be using your fingers, right? And so if that is the case, sometimes in notation, you're going to see it notated which finger to use. So that's what this looks like. Your thumb is P, your index is I, 
your middle finger is M and your ring finger is A. And those have to do with the, the Latin names for your those individual fingers. Okay, that's why it is those letters. So when you see those notated in things, that's what the P is and the I and the M and the A. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the plectrum, which I don't ever hear anybody really say this ever, but it is a small, usually triangular piece of plastic or other material. You know, I've seen stuff made from metal or wood and different stuff like that, that is held between the thumb and first finger and used to strike the strings, also called a pick or guitar pick, okay? so. Yeah, I just call them guitar picks, but if you ever see that word plectrum anywhere, now you know that it's a guitar pick, and that way you're, you don't get lost. So if we define the, the word pick for music, then there's actually two things, the act of stroking or plucking the string to make a sound. So you could pick a string with your finger like this, or with a pick like this. Or pick can also be another name for plectrum. And that's the one everybody uses anyway. So <laughs> does anybody walk around going, have you seen my plectrum? I've lost my plectrum. <laughs> I dropped the plectrum into my guitar. No, nobody says that, guys. Just say guitar pick, okay? Open. When you're playing something, open. No fingers on the fretting hand are pushing on the strings while the picking hand picks or the strings or string, okay? Strum. Stroking more than two strings at the same time so they vibrate simultaneously. So this way. Those are strums, okay? And some of those strings were open, which is awesome, right? When you think of strumming, though, you need to be able to do different kinds of strums. You need to be able to strum two strings, or three strings, or four, or five, or six. But that is what strum is. For a strum pattern, a strum pattern is a series of down and up strums combined to create a rhythmic pattern. We will be doing other videos on strum patterns and how to create your own strum patterns and also how to get out of playing the same strum pattern all the time. There's actually a really cool hack that you can use that you can take any strum pattern and make it sound different so it never feels like you're playing the same thing over and over. That's something that I hear people say all the time is, I feel like all my strum patterns are the same. So I'm gonna show you how to break out of that, but we'll do that in another video. Finger style means using the fingers of the picking hand to stroke the strings rather than using a pick. An accompaniment pattern. This is when you are accompanying yourself or somebody else, usually when they're singing or playing music together. Uh, but the idea is that guitar can be used for accompaniment. So accompanying another person. An accompaniment pattern is a series of strums or a series of strings picked in a specific pattern. Each pattern takes one measure to complete and is repeated every measure. If you don't remember what a measure is from previous videos, we're going to be talking about that in just a minute. An acoustic guitar. Any non-electric guitar. The sound is produced by sound waves bouncing around an acoustic chamber without any amplification. So when you have an acoustic guitar like this, and that's what I'm holding right here, the you strum the strings and the sound from the vibration of the strings bounces around the inside of the body of the guitar and comes out the sound hole, and that is what generates the sound for us. Now, an acoustic electric guitar is still an acoustic guitar. It just has a pickup that also picks up the vibration of the strings and translates it to electric current so that you can send it through a speaker. But still, an acoustic electric guitar is still an acoustic guitar. An electric guitar, though, is a guitar with magnetic pickups, which convert the vibration of strings into electrical current, which is then passed through an electrical cable to a guitar amplifier. And a guitar amplifier, or amp, is the device that electrically amplifies the sound of an electric guitar, and it blows it out through a speaker so that all your neighbors know how awesome you are. 
These next things are going to be a little bit more just general music terms that you're going to hear a lot. One is measure, okay? In musical notation, a measure is a segment of time corresponding to a specific number of beats in which each beat is represented by a particular note value and the boundaries of the measure are indicated by vertical bar lines, okay? So right here, this picture right here, this is a part of what you'll see in music notation. And there's five lines there. And then we have these vertical lines, which are called bar lines. And the space between each bar line is a measure. Okay. And each measure is going to have a certain number of beats. Okay. And we will talk about that later. In most music, most of the music that you hear, every measure is going to have four beats so you could listen to a song and you could count each beat going one two three four one two three four and each measure when we write it down in notation like this each measure will have usually the same number of beats bar is the same thing as a measure it's just one less syllable to say that's all i say bar more frequently than i say measure just because it's easier but it's the exact same thing a bar is a measure and a measure is a bar. It's the same thing. Time signature. So when you see music at the very beginning of it, you're going to see two big numbers stacked on top of each other. The beginning of a piece of written music that specifies how many beats or pulses are contained in each measure and which note value is equivalent to a beat. Okay, so this top number here, this is going to tell you how many beats are in each measure of that song. And then the bottom number is going to tell you what type of note is equivalent to a beat or equals a beat. So we have half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. So whatever number it is down there on the bottom that corresponds with those fractions that have to do with those type of notes will tell you what type of note will get the beat. So if we have four, four here, we have four beats per measure. And the bottom number is a four, just like quarter is a one over a four. And so quarter note would get the beat. So if we were just going to have a note on each of the four beats, it would be four quarter notes. If that were a two, then we would have half notes that get the beat. If we were an eight, then it would be eighth notes that get the beat. Makes sense. We'll talk more about that later, but that is just a basic rundown on what time signature is. Meter is actually the same thing as time signature. It's just easier to say. Same thing. A lot of experienced musicians you'll hear say meter more than they say time signature, and it's the exact same thing. The meter of this song here is 4-4, four, four, so we have four beats per measure, and the quarter note is a beat. Tempo. Tempo is how fast or slow a song is, and it's measured in how many beats per minute or BPM. For example, you'll hear that a song is 100 beats per minute or 87 beats per minute, okay? So 100 BPM, 87 BPM, you'll see stuff like that, okay? And usually at the beginning of a piece of music at the very top, you'll see something like this. So this song would be in 4-4 or something, 2-4 or 3-4 or something like that. Because it's saying that this quarter note equals 120. The translation for this is that the note that gets the beat, which in this case is the quarter note, is equal to 120 beats per minute. So that is how fast the song is going to move. Okay, staff. The collection of horizontal lines used in music notation. There are five lines for standard music notation and six for guitar tab notation. So the top part here where we have the treble clef and we have the 4-4. Four, four. We're not talking about the treble clef right now, but it's that fancy symbol. Looks really cool. That is your standard music notation. Five lines, four spaces. Each line or space on that represents a note, okay? And the bottom part here is a guitar tab staff where we just use the lines, and the lines represent the strings on the guitar. Interval. And we talked about this just recently in another video about what music notes are. But an interval is the distance between any two notes. The most basic interval in music is a half step. An octave is another type of interval. That's the distance between any one note and the same note higher or lower. 
So let me play those for you really quick. If I have this note right here, which is an A, the most basic interval is a half step. So if I go up a half step, then I moved a half step, right? So that was one fret on the guitar. Or I could go lower one half step. It's like the Jaws theme. Just think of that, right? That's a half step. That is your most basic interval or space between any two notes. An octave, though, will sound a little bit different. It's the same note. So we have this A note right here. And then if I go up to the next A higher, it'll sound like this. So that interval is called an octave. And there's a lot of different kinds of intervals, but those are the two most basic ones for you to understand when you're just getting started out playing guitar. Scale. A scale is a set of musical notes starting from a root note. Another word that you'll hear for root note is tonic, okay? And ordered by pitch that follows an interval pattern. So there's a specific pattern of spaces between each note in the scale, okay? And most scales will consist of seven notes. For example, this scale that I have right here on the screen is the C major scale, and the notes of that scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? And if I play it, it'll sound like this. So that is the C major scale going up and down. That's what a scale is. Scales are really, really handy, and we will talk a lot more about them. An arpeggio, this is a cool one. An arpeggio is a set of musical notes derived from playing every other note of a musical scale in sequence. So check this out. We're gonna play one note at a time and I'm gonna take that C major scale that I just played. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play every other note. What I'm gonna play is I'm gonna play C and then E and then G and then B and then D and then I'm going to go back down. So it'll sound like this. This is an arpeggio. So an arpeggio is every other note of a scale. If you play those one note at a time. If we play them all together, we get a chord. A chord is a set of three or more musical notes played simultaneously. Most chords are the notes of arpeggios played simultaneously instead of sequentially. So for example, I could have my C arpeggio like that. That was my C, E, G, and then another C. It, but if I play those together, that makes it a chord. And as little as three will make it a chord, okay? Now I can also play, I can play two notes at a time, but that's technically not a chord. Technically it's called a dyad, kind of like Star Wars, like a force dyad, right? <laughs> I'm a nerd, give me a break. But a chord will require three different notes to be played at the same time. So that's a chord. So a scale is a set of musical notes starting from a root note and ordered by pitch that follows an interval pattern. And then an arpeggio is taking every other note of that scale. And then a chord is playing three or more of those notes from the arpeggio together. So let's look at what sheet music is, okay? This is something that you are going to hear about a lot. Sheet music is a really formal way that we notate how to play certain songs. So right here, this is an example of one of my old band songs and I have it notated out, and you can see that the top part is your standard music notation, and the bottom part of the staff is guitar tap. You'll notice there's the time signature, you got the 4-4, at the top you've got the tempo thing, the quarter note equals 90, so that tells us how fast the song is, and then the sheet music, this is really formal looking compared to the other types of ways that we can notate music out to, to communicate how to play. So next though, I'm going to show you this is, so this version has the 
standard music notation and the guitar tab. This one here is just the guitar tab. So this is just guitar tab, but it has rhythmic notation. So you can see that there's quarter notes and eighth notes and stuff like that in it, but it's still just guitar tab. It's easier to read for a lot of guitar players. And then this is what it looks like in just standard music notation. Pretty cool how you can, you can do whatever one works best for you, whichever one is easiest for you to understand. But when you're when we're talking about sheet music, we're talking about a more formal and finalized notation that is, this is how you play the song, and it's a lot more exact than some other ways. For example, this is a lead sheet for the song Amazing Grace. Now, a lead sheet is actually really handy. You can buy tons of books that are just full of lead sheets. Um, in fact, there's I have fake books. They're called fake books, and they help you fake your way through songs because it's just a lead sheet. So what this is, is you have at the beginning here, we have the most important thing to worry about is the time signature right here. Okay, With the time signature, that tells you how many beats are in each measure. So in this case, we have three beats in each measure, okay? So that, when you know, like, different accompaniment patterns for strum patterns or finger style, you know, finger picking patterns, then you know what kind of patterns you can use when there are three beats in each measure. Then in the notation here, in the music notation, this is the melody of the song, and they have the lyrics of the song, and then the, as a guitar player, the only other thing that we really worry about besides the time signature, unless you're playing the melody and reading that, is the chords listed above each measure. And if we pay attention to these chords and we know that we have three beats in each measure, we can fake our way through the song like this. I could just play... And I could have someone else sing on top of it, or I could sing on top of it. But the idea is, is with a lead sheet, it gives you the most basic information so that you can fake your way through the song and still sound good. Like I said, the most important things in this is going to be the time signature and then the chords above each measure. So you, you'll know how many beats to play each measure, and then you play those chords above each measure for that many beats. And sometimes you'll have two chords and a measure and whatnot. But that's what a lead sheet is. They're really handy. Now, this is a little bit different. This is a rhythm sheet or a chord chart, okay? And I've got two different versions here to show you. First, on the left here, this is an example of a really good chord chart, okay? And what we've got here, this is the song. He's got the whole world in his hands. And we've got the lyrics. And we've got the chords above the lyrics, and we've got the time signature right here. So my time signature here is going to tell us with the first number how many beats we have per measure. And then a proper rhythm sheet like this will have a chord for every measure that you play. So for example, right here on the top row, you see that we've got D three times in a row here. What you would do, you'd strum D, for three measures. So if you're doing four beats per measure, you'd strum it four times for the first D, four times for the second D, and four times for the third D. Then on the second line, you have A7 twice. So you're going to strum A7 four times on the first one and A7 four times on the second one. And this way, you know how long you're supposed to be playing each chord. So this would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, a7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, back to D, right? So every time that chord appears, you're going to strum it one whole measure, okay? Now over here on the right section, this is the kind of stuff that you'll find on the internet just about anywhere. And that is no time signature. <laughs> and also, they don't tell you how long you're going to play. You just have to know the tune or be able to listen to the tune and guess where the chord changes are. They do try to put the chord changes above the lyrics usually in the right place, 
But for the most part, you have to be able to listen to the song, hear the chord changes, and follow that. Okay, so this is a lot harder to follow. It takes more experience, and it can be very confusing. Good chord charts like this are a lot harder to find. In fact, my friend Lauren Bateman, she actually has some really good ones at her website, and I've sent lots of students there to check out her chord charts. So go to laurenbateman.com, check out her chord chart. She actually puts up good ones rather than just ones like this that you can find anywhere on the internet. Anyway, so chord charts, rhythm sheets, they're really handy. You can find just about any chord with them, but that is how you read those and what they are. So guys, I hope that that is helpful for clearing up what some of these musical terms mean for you. Music really is the coolest language in the world, but we do tend to speak with our own language within music. So when we're talking to each other, we use stuff that a lot of people on the outside wouldn't understand. And so I want to bring you guys into the fold and show you guys what some of these different terms are and what they mean so that when you're just starting out playing guitar, you don't get lost, you don't get confused. That way you can sound like a musician when you're talking to people and you also understand musicians when they are talking to you. So on top of that, I have a free gift for you at my website. It is a guide called the top 10 things to learn on guitar first. So if you are just starting out playing guitar, this guide is going to get you the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to getting up and playing and playing real music right away. I don't teach people to play stuff like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or Three Blind Mice or anything. In fact, just a few minutes ago, I had a student here in my studio and she's been taking lessons for a few weeks and I got her to write a song today. Technically, we wrote enough that we could use for three songs, but we got her to write a song and it was easy and it only took one finger and it's awesome. The stuff for that, to be able to do that is in the guide, the top 10 things to learn on guitar first. All you need to know are drop D power chords. They are the most powerful, best thing to learn very first on the guitar because you can play with one finger and you can play thousands of songs and you can write your own songs. It's my favorite thing to do with students just starting out because who doesn't want to just feel like a rock star from day one and be playing awesome sounding stuff, right? So go get the guide, top 10 things to learn on guitar first at simpleguitar.com slash top 10. And I will see you guys in the next video.